안고 있죠. 응, 지난주 브레, 까만 또 까지 좀 나가네, 때 비티, 삼 나가, 네, 당연히, 까지 좀 나가네, 때 비티, 삼 나가, 만 또, 스랍 다케 감, 네, 좀 내, 네, 비 채널, 네, 능 잡아 담, 수, 또, 숨 노, 닝 다우, 다이, 그럼, 미 비, 까, 비, 까, 다이, 로, 그, 논, 치, 문, 미 비, 까, 비, 까, 다이, 비, 그럼, 띠, 하이, 문, 농, 까, 비, 띠, 까, 준, 다이, 그럼, 미 비, 까, 비, 까, 다이, 농, 논, 치, ông chấm ra sớm mình chơi lúc này sai câu vật thí là đi cả bị sát thành bị bọt tầm miền à bọt tầm miền phía kỳ đừng bọc cô để từ có hàng chơi nhà chỗ rùm được không cần chấm lại cả tạm nạc cả đi xôm cột lục vật thí cột phía kỳ tiền o nơi không đường đầy ní miền bọt tầm miền lực lên tài chôn chọc chặt yên sở lý miền bọt tầm miền nơi không bận tục không luôn càng cao bận tục tạm nạc cả đào chôn chọc chặt ban sna xôm lẹ băng sắt tam địa mê thị vịt bỏ cốt nông ca châu rúm đầm nà ca nị tệ thị xã mà nà ca đòi toán bị bận tốc xã mà nà ca xâm rạp địa phê bênh mùi ngay nịt ngay xã mà nà ca nị lý khất lẹ bóng sức đập bọc chôn chọp chát bàn trò cốt đo có làm chi rụi hào xâm ạc quân Wow, ạc quân Ông chấm rẽ bàn trò tùl bị xâm rồi bỏ xung dụp cho ạc dưới rí cho thằng ngày chìm bạc phẩy bầy khai cả cả đài chân nằm bị phòng đọc bí tam địa mê thị vịt bỏ cốt xâm rạp bóng sức cho rùm sạm nạc ca đại phụ tòa là không bổ túc sạm nạc ca đi đời nơi tạm đàn cách nạc ca sạm nạc ca vì chồng ngái tạm để dẹp bọn thỏ tùa xong rạp nạc ca sạm nạc ca đánh đau bình mùi thay đi đời mùi là hết bánh hà sổ cục hiếp bọn ai cũng quý tạm đàn cách nạc ca sạm nạc ca đại phụ tòa là bàn lúc vậy bị chạm bằng đất lâm xì bột thá đại tạ tùa bằng túc bình nứt thay tòm thỏ cục hiếp chôn chọp cháu chúng tôi chào chương trình nơi bậc này miền nam cà rạ vừa mục ở khẩm lăng nơi hot khẩm của tây tây ban anh nhát ở cột nơi tam đàn cây chấm nạc tam nạc bị chấm ngái bị một tụt mũi nứt thắt nơi cầu ông sao tam nạc này ông chấm đây vừa khởi thà nơi bên này chúng tôi chào chương trình đại miền bắc hà sốc hiệp hay cột bàn lẻ bằng thất chầu rùm cây chấm nạc tam nạc đại tổ แต่ก่อนไอ้ตามด้านการจำนาการสำนาการพิจมง่ายพิมพ์ตุกคุมครูนมุ้ยท่านในกรมสารสำนาการนี้ให้ตามเรียบประกอบสอตัวหนึ่งไอ้จำรูลดอลตุ่มเนตตุ่มดองเรียงก่อนจมุ้ยหนึ่งกรมมีตัววิกาเปียระบกวัดบานให้ดูชนะอังยมเรียบยุบร่มตามนาสมระบกจุนเดียวจอดอิงจีรีได้บานสนาสมเรียบบังสุดเจ้ารวมการจำนาการสำนาการตัวขนมตุกสำนาการนี้เอาลูกอิงจีรีในตามด้านการจำนาการสำนาการพิจมง่ายพิมพ์ตุกคุมครูนมุ้ยท่านในกรมสารสำนาการนี้ tạm để dạy bà con sáu tuổi, sản phẩm dạy pel năm nay cả sản phẩm cả, ở bên mũi thay này, hay bà con ở phía này sáu tuổi, cho bà con sáu tuổi, sản phẩm chuẩn cho cho những gì ai mà to tạm đàn cái chấm đại ca sản phẩm cả bị chấm ngái, nơi không một lòng pel vừa sản phẩm cả, sản phẩm thay này, chỉ cách mà to anh em đã xem phát đạt bị tất cả chuẩn từ cầm mấy tập bị cả bị cái đây nôn chí, nó bị mình là tập hiệp mà tăng số độ đỉnh đầu là chụp phu để chụp nhìn, xem chơi. Sum group Aung San Naka, Sum group Luk Bantin. So, Sri Luk David Chen lah. Kepa Tham ni, Kham Mien Sum Nu, Sum Nu, Mu Jum Nu. Sum Nu, Ti Mu, Ti Mu, Ti Mu, Sư lúc chân lỡ thả Khăn ông thân nạ lúc chiên nẹ sao chiêu Chiên nẹ nếp bốn Ta lúc miên chùm nơ bọn màn phía rối khăn ông ca sạc xa sao chiêu Bên đại lúc bàn xâm phía Bàn sao chiêu ai kia xa phía xa phía Bàn tùm mơ đo cần lại anh phát tỏa Rồi bỏ ai kia xa nụ Lúc miên chùm nơ tù lưu ai kia xa nụ Miên bọn màn phía rối Uh... 
thank you. I'm not quite sure what the question means. If you mean, I've drawn my conclusions, what percent of my conclusions have I drawn from interviews and how many from documents? Is that what the question means? In which case, I can say probably it varies from book to book. I, mean, I, did, I did very few interviews for the S21 book for obvious reasons. I did a lot of interviews for the tragedy book, quite a few for Pol Pot. Uh, documentary evidence in all these books was heavy, so I'd say no, maybe 75, 25 for the history, for the uh, tragedy book, this is documents versus uh, interviews, uh, 80, 20 for brother number one, documents, interviews, and uh, 95, 5 documents, interviews for Voices from S21. បាទអញ្ចឹងខ្ញុំបានប្រើឯកសារច្រើនណាស់ជាបង្អែកនៃការសរសេរសភើរបស់ខ្ញុំនេះ <coughs> លោកអាចខ្ញុំអាចថាលោកបានលើគីប្រាប់ <coughs> Well, this is exactly the point that a historian has to make a choices between the documents he believes because they're heavily corroborated, the documents he distrusts for various reasons and often uh, uh, casts aside, and the same is true with interviews. Uh, it's an intuitive thing largely whether you're relying on uh, what, what the uh, interviewer is saying or not. Uh, <coughs> these are all different uh, choices, and surely going to the locations of uh, the sentence of the things that I wrote, I mean, with the time factor, it was impossible for me to go, for instance, to Paris in the 1950s. I couldn't go to uh, the killing fields in uh, DK because I wasn't allowed into Cambodia. I, so, exact locations, I did go as much as I could after 1990 uh, to Cambodia to do my interviews. Uh, so, I'm not sure that the location where the documents were generated or the original location of the people I interviewed in different places was a factor in what I wrote. So, សំណួរទីពីរបស់ខ្ញុំកាលពីថ្ងៃទីដប់ដើម្បីខែខែខែនេះខែបំពលនេះលោកបានឆ្លើយទៅនឹងI'd, I'd have to just to see what at that time was, but certainly uh, Democratic Kampuchea did not accept uh, rec diplomatic recognition from other countries, uh, except for, uh, I think, uh, China, North Korea, uh, Vietnam, Laos. There were other embassies that were open for a while in uh, Cuba and other places that closed down. I recognized them and diplomatically recognized them. It would depend on what time you're talking about. If you mean April 75 or whatever it was. And it fought. Uh, I mean, the point I th think I was trying to make there underneath what I said was that the, the regime of Democratic Cambodia didn't uh, pay much attention to diplomatic recognition from other countries and certainly didn't seek it from countries that it uh, was not uh, closely related to.
đào thả bờ tê đào kia mình miên tận đẹp nông chất sét kia mình quạt quạt thì ở cồn nông nông rẻ pê na chỉ rộp bọc cam bạch chi bạch chi thực vật tây miền tây thả chặt bị chăm mười pon bầm bùi rồi chặt sập bầm là hốt đòn pon bùi rồi chặt sập bầm bùn rẻ pì nứng bờ tam ai cả sa xem xem ปะกุมมณีเอ่อมีจรณะปะมาปฏิมาปิบ่ามอกปีขังรบขังกาดให้ปฏิได้เอ่อโจปะกุมมณีบ่ตามខ្ញុំ đại ban chọn chấm non tút chấm môi nắng cam bị chia bị chia thập tài hay khiêm xua thả nghe tút môi chấm non thấm bị xe cam bị cô mình đi bạn cô mình đi bật đi cần lịch thi cô mình đi đôi cam bị chia bị chia trái đá ban tôi scroll ban thư tụm nẹt tụm nong bên đây chỉ cắm bàn thơ tụm nẹt tụm nong platut chỉ mùi khné hay nếu ông ca sĩ hạ bạch chiết chiết còn nếu lực tung chi cầm bạch chiết bạch chiết thập tài đại nông nghiệp biển luôn chẳng hay bàn kiếm xu từ lập một vinh thạch tá lục đánh miền bắc sa chìm riệp từ chợ cầm nhà lục xây chợ cầm khai rái ngày đã ti đập bay khai bầm bầm lớn trong miền đây thay cho ចំឡៃសម្អកុនចុចចុចអ្នកជំនាញកុមារតុនឆ្លើយតមានការចំតោះតវ៉ាពីតំណាងសហប្រជាជនសូមជាមុនខ្ញុំ ซูสมนูสมนูสมนูสมนูสมนูสมนูสมนูสมนูสมนูสมนูสมนูสมนูสมนูสมนูสมนูสมนูสมนูสมนูสมนูสมนูสมนูสมนูสมนูสมนูส
xóm xu lục sơ sơ cha chân lơ lục chân lơ đại lục khuyên ra chân nà xung bọn nâng mục nghỉ nâng tu nít tì rồi bỏ cam bạch chìa bạch chìa trực bạch tay chìa phá lâu cả ra chân nà xung bọn chìa phá lâu cả lục đại bản khuyên bản thật tu lục bạch lọt đi ราชนาสมปองตังปีธนาเลือดโลดอลธนาครมยูเรฟเฟอร์งทูดีสตรัคเจอร์ดีกัฟเวอร์เนตยูเดอร์โรราชนาสมปองรัฐาพิบาลกรรมชีพชีพตายหรือ Any documents that would suggest for defining the structure of the DK government? Is that what I'm being asked? What your question, I'm afraid, wasn't entirely clear to me. Or were you referring to the embassies again? I'm not sure. I couldn't quite get to asking. Lúc mình thì có bây giờ chạy bằng chất bản lộ Cứ ai cửa xa Rư có ra chân nào xâm phôn chạy xa đầy Các bạn chạy thật bất tay Vì bạn dù là xâm nô rồi bảo lộ Nông cao xu bảy mình đi Và xin bảo dùng từ ai cửa xa Cứ chất bản lộ chạy ai cửa xa Và lộ dùng từ ra chân nào xâm phôn Chặt tăng này Rót tập ba rư rót tham bí ba Các bạn chạy thật bất tay chạy xa đầy Nếu cứ chạy rương mùi tiết xong mà con lục thiên khi em xong bệnh trẻ nếu nếu không nồng ra chân nào xong bọn rồi bỏ cầm bệnh gì vậy tay đại dương miền ai cả xa mà cục chân mà hỏi thấy dương bắt được chơi khi này chân khai mà hỏi đá ra chân nào ra chân nào xong bọn miền ra chân nào xong bọn rồi bỏ bắt ra chân nào xong bọn rồi bỏ rồi thả bị bá Nâng ra chả nà xâm phôn rồi bỏ rốt sạp hì Bạc bà dìa chôn cầm bà chìa Mình nhé kèm xua thà ra chả nà xâm phôn rồi bỏ bạc Tà lục bàn đài khơi ra chả nà xâm phôn chìa phlau ca rồi bỏ bạc Đài rửa tì I've seen documents that help me to reconstruct what this structure must have been, and a lot of this is contained, of course, in the uh, statutes of the party that we looked at the other day. Uh, the structure of the party running down from the secretary of the Central Committee on down through zones and uh, offices and uh, what looked like ministries but weren't called that has all been heavily documented, and it's available for study, yes. ไม่มีไอ้สารไม่ชนนู้นได้ยังบานเคยให้ไปเช็คไปปอร์มีนี่เจ้าจิมปูรัชนาสมปองรบบอรัฐภิบาลในปะกรมนิกรรมจีเว
รือก็ทานุขนงรัฐบาลนุขนงปะจูปะบอกกินนั่งมินดักเล็กจังได้หรืออัดชำลัย This is one of the many names by which what was known. Uh, they didn't use this in official documents. It's a, it's a if you like, an intimate, an intimate and respectful designation. Uh, for him, he's sometimes called uh, Uncle Secretary or Omlika, but I think brother number one. Being, he was never called anything lower than number one. He was, of course, the secretary of the Central Committee. This was a term in use during Democratic Cambodia, and I thought it would make a suitable title for my book. ลูกบ้านบัญชีโดยมหาอัมพีรัชนาสมปองบอกปะคือหักโดยเชียพีระมิดวิลเลจโอมกราวเจ้าองค์พิบโตโตขังกราวอติฮาโดยเชียซามอภัยมุยมันตีซ้ำมาเพิ่มมุ้ยลูกดังฉบับท่าเมียนไรชนะสมปองจังได้หรือก็ขอกนี่ยังไม่ขอบคุณมากและบางทีไม่ในกรณี S21 มันเป็นการแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่งปันแบ่ง
luộc ai sẵn để than thà bình chia tiếng ơ đèn khmer chỉ tu tư bàn chọn bậc căn thà bắt cùng đi cam chia sầm lấp bậc chia chôn ấy ta ta luộc chưa thế không sầm đây chọn căn tiếng ơ không The question is not clear to me. There certainly are documents in Son Sen's handwriting back to Doit telling him to suggest that he continue to work hard to come take or smash uh, individual uh, people in S21. Uh, there's oral evidence from witness statements and so on that I haven't consulted in detail, but I've seen them in interviews that other people have conducted, suggesting that orders came down to gather in or to uh, smash certain uh, characters. Certainly, uh, these orders came down. Uh, I think they were not signed, uh, and, uh, but they were obeyed. So it seems to me uh, that they were obeyed uh, and that they were known to be coming from above is the proof that I wanted. It's all the proof I needed. លោកឈិនលោកបានសរសេរសិភោសំលេងសមភិមួយត្រង់ទំព័រ <coughs> ខ្វះខាតរបស់ខ្ញុំខ្ញុំមានន័យថានួនជាគឺថាខ្ញុំមិនបានតាមដានឯកសារប្រវត្តិរូបរបស់ <coughs> Him and Ban Chick Ruchikul, Rung Krusakiti, Nitwe a Kmang Min Oka Yangi, Knonka Chirichol, Sirung Tiknong Pat. At the bot, Doik him bad, Ban Andrew Mokang, a glue hiney, Tam, look, you'll tie your mic, Minna, tie your mic, some look, uh, Jim Rip, like a man. ដែលលោកនួនជាមិនមានអ្នកស្កាតតាយសូវអាយ <coughs> របស់អ្នកចំនៀងដើម្បីសួរដេញដោលក៏បីផ្ដល់នៅឯកសារលេខ <coughs>
สมอคนลูกเทียนเขียมสไลน์นะเดาเขียมมันบานดิบจอมไอกิสากรุ๊ปกรอนมอจิมรีบมอกซูจุบจุบลายเนจิมนิ้งเขียมสมานตาเขียมมันยิ่งสมานนี่เป็นเขียมยูลทัลมาให้ลูกจิมนิ้งลูกลูกหนึ่งจำอัตบัตบอกลูกละเป็นจังเต้เขียมนั่งบัตต่อสมนุตุมุกเทียนจุบเจ้าสมนุนจ่อเขียมินสมโนมวยเทียดเออนู้ไอกษาจิจรันนะพิจรันเดลิกรามตุรเลกหมอกปีอยู่ที่หมอกปีคุมพีตแต่สดเซมอกถนัดเลยจูนบองจังเต้าหุ่นเป็นนักจำลองจูนบองนูนอมนูนบองวันบองไฮไม่จังละขนมอัตบอดมวยมวยแต่สดเซจูนเต้าเนี่ยนาเฮ้ยจำลองจูนเนี่ยขังกระอมตั้งประมาณลูกยืดท่าจำลองจูนนั่งเนี่ยประมาณนั้นมีนอดิปุลโดยแค่จุนตัวนกขังเลยได้ออกติอาถาบอกแค่จุนตัวบองมีนิทาบองปดให้จำลองจุนตัวบองนู้นบองไฮบองวันบองเอ็งจังแต่ในในปีบองขังเลยนั่งไอ้นึกจำลองจุนกรอมบัดตามลูกยุลท่าเนี่ยขังกรอมนั้นไอ้อันวอตบานโดยเนี่ยเพียงจุนทางเลือดที่ลูกโยมสมนุนบอกยังนี่คือใบบอดรอดบาลเลยนั่นคือคำถามที่น่าสนใจมากสำหรับผม Just as a normal bureaucratic procedure, people who are copied on a document do not have authority to act on it. They have authority to read it and to share it with the person to whom it's been addressed. Now, I kept stressing in my earlier testimony that this is a the PK was a collective leadership and that these people felt themselves uh, felt themselves entitled to make collective decisions and to be aware of uh, things that were happening. Uh, The fact that the addressed names of many of these telegrams, uh, several of which came to my attention after I finished my research, my written research, uh, are of a very limited number of people who are familiar to us, and some of them are here today, uh, shows how small this. A uh, pool of informants was, and, and re, re, uh, I can re-emphasize from that the. Tight security in which the uh, regime operated and the uh, secrecy with which it carried on most of its activities. So, my good look, Chandler. This is some new when job or box yum. สิ่งใดสมรักยุบบ่กันหนักไม่ชมอัมพีปัญหาเซมซีมวยจุ่มนุ่นนั่งในเอกสารเลขเออใบฟลัชดับปีจอทั้งไงที่สิ่งใดสมรักนี้จอทั้งไงที่สามสิบแค่มิตรนี้ชนะมวยปอนประมูลร้อยเจ็ดสิบประมูลเออตรงสุดทีมุ้ยสุดสมรัยกับติดขนมชูหนึ่งคราวชูจำลองชื่อทางจังสมนมโป้มุ้ยเอาเมียนกรอกขันขนมเก๊กอนุวัตรพัฒนาปะดิวัตรบอยยืงปังรึงประชีปีปังรึงประชีทวัตไตสังคมยุ่มรบอยยืงอย่างอันนี้ดำไปปังรึงรถอำนาจรบอยยืงจดมุ้ยบ่าหนุกร้องกรอบคันมูลฐาน
ตรอาจยันตรายสมรัยเมจุมวิ่งมันตีมาชุ่มตรูกระนั้นมันตีสมรัยสมตุจุมวิ่งมันตีมาชุ่มตรูกระนั้นมันตีมาชุ่มสมรัยจุมนักที่ใบดำบอลไอเกรตตรูอาจยันตรายสมรัยจุมนักที่บุญกองโตไม่ชุ่มเตาเลขาติกาสมรัยกองจมน้อยจมน้อยพ่อจมน้อยที่มวยในสักใดสมรัยจะบอกกันนะไม่ชุ่มนี้ยิ่งสมสูรลูกเชิญเลือดถ้านายตักอ้อนนี่ดเลกันนะไม่ชุ่มบานสมรัยใจเอาเตาคางทะเอากระเพียบมวยมวยนักยังหายแต่ถนัดดักน้อมขังเลือนก็ปูลูกนมีนาหนึ่งมันเชี่ยต่อแล้วที่เต้หรือนี่นี่สมรัยระบอกมาชมหายเอาตัวมาเอาตัวอะไรเงี้ยมูลทานเอาหายกาอัดไม้กาทุกการเนยฮอตคลังและหุ่นดอลอัดทำอัดจังเกวียนนั่งว่าตามไอกษาเยี่ยมเอาตาลูกยูธาตั้งอ่อนนี่เขียมนายรบบมูลทานพตอลหรือก็บัญชีรบบกันนะไม่เชื่อมต่อเรื่องของการเมืองที่เราได้รับการแนะนำจากคณะรัฐมนตรีและคณะรัฐมนตรีของเราได้แนะนำการให้ผู้ใหญ่ทุกคนมาที่ศูนย์ตรวจสอบแล้วไม่ได้ส่งข้อมูลไปที่ศูนย์ตรวจสอบแต่ผมเชื่อว่ามีการสร้างระหว่างศูนย์ตรวจสอบและศูนย์ตรวจสอบในขณะที่ศูนย์ตรวจสอบ And the uh, bases at this time, center in the zones. This is before in uh, March '76. Is before these zone and uh, sector uh, leaders came under suspicion. It was a period when the uh, central government uh, trusted these people, and these people trusted the central government. So I'd say this is quite an authoritative uh, document that would have been followed up with other uh, more specific orders that have not survived. ลูกเทียนเขียมออสมนุปันไตบรรทบมาเขียมมีนสหการีเขียมหนึ่งมีนสมนุต่อทิศปันมุนหนึ่งสหการีเขียมหนึ่งมีนสมนุลูกนุนจีพตอลก็มีนสมนุมุ้ยจองซูเตอร์เนจมเนียงตามเรียลูกเทียนตาอันยาได้กอดซูรุรุตีบันจุ่ยลูกนุนจี sum cổ rúp bong phúc mai bong ôn ruộng chiết sum cổ rúp tra ca sum cổ rúp lục bát thiên sum cổ rúp nhẹ chấm niềng nhóm men pi sum nu sum nu thì mùi ta tăng pi đào mau rồi hốt đó lại lâu tẩm nơ ระเวียงปะระเวียงไปจีจนกัมพูชีหนึ่งเวียดนามเมียนมูลหาสำคัญมอกปีปัญหาปรุงแดนหรือมอกปีปัญหาอะไรจีสำคัญนี่ข้อที่มวยข้อที่ปีบ้านในนนทีจำสนับการชลัยตัวท่านจำนวนสำนวนที่ปีหนึ่งสู่ประตูที่ lúc đại chúng biến lúc sắp đặt sầm nua lúc luôn chia xua mình bàn thế hay bà xua bán bà sắp đặt bàn hay lúc anh xoay tòm nâng sầm nua đây xua đây lúc luôn chia đi bàn này được tí xong chơi mà thank you chấm điên xong ô cun and 
With respect to uh, Mr. Nunchia, who is a person whom I do respect, this is a crucial historical question that would probably take 100 pages to answer. Uh, the conflict between Vietnam and Cam conflicts between Vietnam and Cambodia, between the CPK and the Vietnamese uh, Communist Party, between the preceding and subsequent the preceding regimes and so on. It takes us, to give a proper answer, it takes us way outside the parameters of this, uh, of this uh, court because of the 1975-79 limits that have been set. But certainly the causes that I have tried to uh, come up with is nobody wouldn't of course know the primary cause. This is all a matter, uh, we've had these discussions in previous days, it's a matter of informed opinion, but it seems to me that there's a good deal of blame, if that's what you're looking for, or responsibility that can be shared by the two parties, uh, springing from, I think, uh, sorry, but I think, a uh, failure or a to respect uh, the opinion of the other party, an animosity that goes are too deep to allow for negotiations, and so uh, it's not a question of who started what, but it's a question of uh, an animosity that was already in, exhibited by the Lonol regime, uh, continued under the uh, DK regime, an uh, animosity of, um, if you like, uh, the Vietnamese fought the Lan Nol regime. The Vietnamese and uh, DK were in conflict from uh, open, more or less open conflict, although it was secret to the world in late 77 and it opened up in 78. Causes of this, I think, if you want to just I don't mean to say you want to, that's not respectful, but if, you're, if one's looking for a phrase to describe the causes, I would say it's a lot of history and mutual distrust. តាកំណើតរបស់ប៉ាក់កុម្មុយនីកម្ពុជាមានមកដោយសារចលនារបស់ប្រជាជនកម្ពុជាឬមានកំណើតដោយពន្ធបរទេសនាំពីក្រៅ
quite sharply and by the time the uh, CPK is uh, preparing uh, statutes and, and so on in the, during the Civil War, that influence has faded. So there's a whole history of a relationship with an outside power and a whole history of an autonomous movement uh, first going along with Vietnamese cooperation and then gradually removing itself from that uh, relationship. Thank you, Mr. President, and good morning to everyone, and especially good morning to you, Professor Chandler. Um, thank you for being here with us again uh, after what I am sure was a tiring week last week. Um, today I want to start to ask you some questions about the sources of your knowledge. And, um, we spoke about that, or you spoke about that already last week, so I will be uh, quite brief, but I would like to come back to a statement that you made on uh, Wednesday. It is in the transcript on pages uh, 52 and 53, and I will just quote it. Uh, you stated the following, and I quote, just a personal footnote, when I was writing those books in the late 1980s, I would certainly have been much happier had I had, I had access to the materials in the closing order because I've been reading material in the last couple of days that would have been just perfect to put into my books, but this material was not available to me. Professor Chandler, could you tell the court what material exactly you were referring to when you said that you'd been reading material uh, that had not been available to you earlier? For example, I refer to the uh, open letter by Norodom Sinuk. Uh, it's called uh, Mon Histoire et les derniers jours du de, 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 uh, régime uh, de, de Democratic Cambodia, describing. It's an open document, but it's, it's footnoted in the, in, the, in the closing order, describing aspects of the conversation he had in early January 1979 with uh, Pol Pot that had not been available. Uh, things like this, uh, documents that, uh, <coughs> statements, for, for example, that were given by uh, some of the, uh, some of the uh, people, uh, by some of the, the uh, other direct statements, nothing in those statements would have altered my general findings. They would have amplified and added to the footnotes in my book. I didn't find any uh, revelatory material that would have changed it, but the piling up of material that, that uh, I found in, in the closing and many other uh, documents that were given to me, like some of the confessions and and so forth, uh, just amplified my knowledge, which has been, uh, shall we say, a bit, uh, I haven't been hard at work on the Khmer Rouge for some time, and it, it, it lit up some uh, places in the history that interested me. I think my remark uh, in Wednesday may have seemed a bit uh, jocular, and I didn't mean to mean that as saying, for instance, that anything I'd read in the closing order would have made me uh, recant or take back anything I said in the others, but that I felt the material that had become available since 1998, which is when I stopped writing, uh, would have improved the books I wrote before that, or some of the material, not all of it, of course. Thank you, uh, Professor Chandler. And the Follow-up question to this is, when you were reading the closing order, did you 
gets to read all the footnotes that are attached to the closing order. There's over 6,000 of them, the answer is no, but I looked up when the, when the subject interested me, I looked in the back and found out what I could cite. That's why, for instance, why I cited that scenic letter. Many of the things that were interesting had witnesses' names blanked out and so forth. They'd be unusable for me in anything I wrote. I often checked something that interested me in the back and there'd be something redacted in those, this kind of language, perfectly fair. So I cited one sort of semi-open document. There are also statements made by uh, uh, Pan to the court, which are court documents were cited that way. They clarified some of his biographical details, details that I had not been aware of. So when I could found something interesting and found that it was an open document, I made a note of that. Otherwise, I'm afraid I didn't say uh, such and such, it's untrackable, it's just some of these footnotes you can't, the way they're rendered in the, in the uh, document, you can't, uh, there's no way you can use them in a, in a historical work. And I'm asking you for the obvious, but that is sometimes our task. Um, did you have access to the documents that came out of the investigation by the OCIJ that were labeled confidential. I don't think I did. I don't, I don't recall that. In your testimony last week, you also uh, spoke of three big books which you refer to as uh, primary documents. And I was wondering which three big books you were referring to. These were books that I, I had hard copies made of the documents that. Uh, People said they would be talking to me about if I, when I came to the court. Uh, biggest, the biggest book was a book of the confessions that had annotations with it. Uh, the third book would have been the closing order. And there's a fourth one that I can't quite identify, but it certainly would have been possibly the translations of the confessions. I think that's it. Because I look mainly at the Khmer one to look at the transmittal, those transmittal things. There were texts of confessions of several pages I didn't consult because I heard here that we can't use that as evidence, so I, I skipped those pages. And as a follow-up question to that, have you been reading any documents in preparation for this testimony that have not been provided by the parties to this trial? Yes, I've been reading uh, some published books that have been written about the trial. I've been re written, to refresh my memory, the book by uh, John Kikari with the, about the tribunal uh, is one I've read. I've looked at, uh, let me think what else. Uh, no, open, I just think open sources, no, no confidential documents of any kind. Uh, I think it's not available to the court. It might even be a court document. But yes, I've, I've refreshed my memory with some of the books and articles about the court to see uh, just to, because I had not been paying attention to it for, for several months. That leads me into the uh, next question, which you partly answered, but have you been following the proceedings of the trial, uh, this trial case 002? And if so, to what extent? Primarily by uh, newspaper accounts, but also from occasionally from emails from people who have been particip participating in the inquiries. Uh, uh, mainly, I would say journalistic journalistic reports, because I haven't been gathering material myself to write a book, write an article about the courts. I haven't been assiduous in gathering sources. It's been an informal process. And considering your um, interest in Deutsch, which is well known to all parties here in the court, did you pay attention to Deutsch's testimony in case 002? I'm not sure I had access to that. I certainly paid attention to him in case one. I'm not sure I, I, no, I'm sure because of the, his vivid use of language, I'm sure I would have remembered reading that testimony. I don't think I did.
Do you remember, me, do you remember reading newspaper articles about Doik's testimony in K002? No, no, I don't. Um, have you been in touch with any of the other scholars on the DK era in connection with your testimony here at the court and that can be contact either by email or by telephone or maybe in person? Yeah, I mean, of course I have, and I have not received any suggestions that these contacts should be restricted. Uh, I've been in touch with many friends and colleagues, particularly as I was coming, coming to the court, uh, to uh, you know, just refresh myself on the way the court's been operating and what testimony's been given. I haven't I've missed the great testimony, as you suggest, but yes, I have been in touch with friends and colleagues. Professor Chandler, to be absolutely clear, I'm not um, placing any blame on you for having contacts with these people, um, not at all. I'm just trying to establish um, what your sources of knowledge are, what your sources of information are, and on what uh, information you base your testimony here today. So that's all I'm trying to establish, and I do not hold you at fault at all. Um, having said that, part of your primary research into the uh, DK regime has consisted of studying the S21 confessions. And you stated last week that you are convinced that the S21 confessions were cold after the fall of the DK regime. Could you explain to the courts what exactly you mean with the expression to cull? I'm relying there on uh, the uh, testimony of, uh, I I'm not sure, I don't think he has not testified to the court, but a uh, person, an uh, intellectual who was uh, 1979, one of the first people to be asked to work through the archives of uh, Tuo Slang. This is a man called Ong Tong Hung who lives in, uh, in Belgium. He wrote a book called I Believed in the Khmer Rouge. Uh, he described in that book how Vietnamese officials at that time were reading a lot of these confessions. I know that's true because many confessions have Vietnamese writing on them even now, comments that I can't read. Uh, it's certain to me that uh, other documents have uh, several people we know were at S21, important people, the confessions are not there. Uh, for instance, the, the key one example of something that I, how do you say, um, I suspect very strongly was called was the uh, confession of Nesaran or Ya, the secretary of the uh, Northeastern Zone. Uh, there's 40 pages in the archive, mostly consisting of, uh, of uh, constructions coming from Doig and so on, whereas uh, one of the interviews that uh, Stephen Heather conducted in 1980 with very, very fresh, very close after the uh, regime and long before these public research was around to, uh, uh, how do you want to say, uh, <coughs> change people's minds, one of the people he interviewed, former Khmer Rouge, or maybe even active Khmer Rouge at that time, but in Thailand, said that uh, there had been a speech by a high party official quoting from this confession that took an hour. <laughs> so here's a, here's a, something happened to that hour-long confession. And again, why one thinks it, why one thinks it might have been called is it's also the only confession that Pol Pot mentioned in his interview with uh, Nate Fair. Oh yes, there's Ja, there's, remember that confession? I mean, he probably knew a lot more, but that's all he said. This was a very important character and the Northeast was, a, was an area that could be in Vietnam. And it seems to me, again, with no evidence, <laughs> sorry, that this was a confession that actually contained information about his relationship with Vietnam. 
which is a logical and sensible thing for some of the Khmer Rouge to have in the sense that they felt things were spinning out of control. Where do we go? Who's more sensible? Go to our friends, this person had been fighting with the Vietnam alongside them for years. So it's not in the, it was not in the interest of the Vietnamese in the 80s to have that confession there, because it would say, at least one of the confessions in Phil's Frank has information that suggests that we were ever uh, subverting this regime. I guess a lot, I know there's a lot of suppositions there, but we also know, and I, I, that there are collections of documents that are known to be in Vietnam that were taken from here, not available to anybody. Uh, we don't know that they include confessions, but I suspect they they might, they certainly include party documents. Uh, so that, that, I mean, that's a long answer, but that's the source of my use of the word cult. Thank you, that, that was a uh, long answer, um, but very insightful, I think. My initial question, I think, was uh, meant to be a bit more simple, and I uh, simply wanted you to explain the word call to the people here present in the courtroom, because I'm not sure that it translates very well into Khmer uh, and or French. Well, it means uh, for an outside party to go through a series of documents that they haven't generated and select either things that interest them particularly to make a smaller pile of documents or to remove documents that are not in their, that they feel would be uh, not in their interest. And I think in maybe both processes work, work in, in, the, in this case. Certainly for the party documents that we know are, are now in Hanoi but completely inaccessible. This would be uh, of interest to the Vietnamese and, and of thought by them, of course, not to be uh, useful for the wider public. And when you were speaking about this topic last week, you also mentioned uh, the PRK in connection with the public. Could you expand on that a little bit? Because you know the Vietnamese. Well, the uh, the tool slang uh, Museum of Genocide was, uh, was set up by uh, the Vietnamese, uh, with, uh, there were Cambodians working there uh, in the archive and so on. <coughs> I'm not sure I, if I suggested that there was systematic calling of the confessions by officials in the PRK government, that's not right. I mean, I don't, that's not fair. But it, it occurred under PRK. And this uh, early days, uh, I think the uh, officials at PRK were not in a position to resist what they were asked to do by their Vietnamese associates. Uh, me, later on, you had I mean, if this uh, process of, you know, I was thinking the second batch of confessions that is mentioned uh, that went to DC Cam coming from interior, uh, the ones that were from Sonsen's former office, it seemed to me not for the PRK, but for Vietnamese, this would be a very nice bunch of documents to take away because they're very revelatory, but certainly the, Khmer, the PRK did nothing to uh, keep these documents out of circulation. And also in connection Some with this, you stated that the Vietnamese were very historically minded. And I think you partly answered my question already this morning, but just now, but could you explain how the Vietnamese were very historically minded when it comes to calling the confessions. Uh, and what is the role of the Vietnamese historically minded when it comes to I think there is genuine historical uh, curiosity at work here. I mean, Vietnam has a long tradition of history writing, history reading, 
uh, books of history are bestsellers in Vietnam, which they're not necessarily in Cambodia. Uh, the notations of uh, confessions in um, S21, of texts in S21, suggest that some of the uh, people assigned to this archive were genuinely interested in finding out what had happened. They, they didn't understand the Khmer Revolution. Uh, this is well known. It, it, it didn't seem to operate in a way in a way that a communist revolution was, in quotation, supposed to operate. So they were reading to try and discover what, what happened. And uh, they kept documents uh, because they keep extensive archives. They've got, uh, and these archives are largely inaccessible to outsiders, but it seems to me if you uh, were people without historical um, turn of mind, and this I think is a, a way you can characterize many Cambodians not having such a turn of mind, you don't have to if you don't want to, uh, they would have destroyed these archives. Uh, I remember, this is an anecdote, but it fits, uh, back in the uh, UNTAC period when they were setting up the National Assembly and so on and so on, they suggested that they should have a Hansard situation okay. where all the debates of the National Assembly should be uh, recorded and printed and bound, and this went nowhere. They <laughs> weren't interested in that history of the night. This is not bad. So they said, no, what's the point? But uh, so it's a historical uh, cast of mind, is what I'm saying, basically. Thank you. I, I understand your answer. In connection with this topic, I would like to um, show you an excerpt from your own book, uh, Voices from S21. It's document number D108-39-2, and English ERN is 00192667232. Khmer ERN is 00191816242. 89, and the French ERN is 00357247251. And the page uh, I want to talk about is page 9, and with your permission, President, could this be shown on the screen? And we have a hard copy available for you in English, uh, Professor Chandler, but I'm also going to read it out, so it is um, whatever you prefer. Would you like to have a hard copy in front of you, or would you like me to read it out to you? I will read the um, relevant excerpts to you so that also the wider public can hear it, and I uh, quote from your work, Cambodians' interpretations of the Pol Pot era slip easily into Manichaean frameworks that make poor history but are emotionally satisfying and consistent with much of what they remember. This point has been driven home by the French psychiatrists Hegel and Landrak, who worked in Khmer Rouge refugee camps in Thailand in the 1980s. It is always more comfortable to have a Manichaean vision of the world, for that allows us not to ask too many questions or at least to have the answer readily at hand. In this fashion, representing the Khmer Rouge as a, as a homogeneous group of indoctrinated fanatics, the incarnation of absolute evil, responsible for all the unhappiness of the Khmer people, is a reductive vision of a complex phenomenon but one which a good many people find satisfying. And here, Professor Chandler, I get to the quote that I want to ask you about. Within just such a Manichaean framework, the PRK regime worked hard to focus people's anger onto the genocidal clique that had governed Cambodia between April 1975 
and General Burke, 1979. That's <coughs> less relevant for us now, but while the new government based its legitimacy on the fact that it had come to power by toppling the Khmer Rouge, it was in no position to condemn the entire movement, since so many prominent PRK big figures had been Khmer Rouge themselves until they defected to Vietnam in 1977 and 1978. Professor Chandler, what I want to ask you about is this quote within the quote. Within just such a Manichaean framework, the PRK regime worked hard to focus people's anger onto the genocidal clique that had governed Cambodia between April 1975 and January 1979. Can you explain to us in what way the PRK regime worked hard on this enterprise? Uh, thank you. Yeah, <coughs> certainly in the uh, trial of Ian Suri and Pol Pot for genocide that took place, I think in August 1979, also in the textbooks of uh, Canadian schools uh, in the early 1980s, through such things as the annual uh, Day of Hate on May 20th, I think, every year, uh, the institution of uh, the Museum of Genocidal Crimes, uh, uh, again, not ever suggesting that the leadership of uh, KK was as collective as we know it was, but was, in fact, uh, the uh, sort of plaything of a uh, corrupt and uh, insane uh, pair of people, Pol Pot Yung Suri. I use those things in quotation. I'm certainly not referring to Mr. Yung Suri. This is what they were trying to do, uh, reduce it to personalities. And just as an aside and a parenthesis, it's the way we think ourselves. So I'm not talking down to these people. We talk of Reagan's America or you know, as if... <laughs> He was entirely responsible for everything that was happening. We talk of uh, people who kept talking about the Pol Pot era, when there was a lot of other things happening besides him. But it's a way we concentrate ourselves often on a, on a person. We'd rather do that than talk about institutions that we don't understand. But yes, they, they did an effort to have this history uh, limited to a handful of people and also to be uh, uh, written in such a way that it was absolutely evil and apparent to it, it, would, it would be absolutely evil and apparent to any sensible Cambodian citizen. And in connection with this, um, you have written elsewhere about a, a dominant narrative of the Khmer Rouge era with, as you say today, just a few demonic perpetrators and um, millions of innocent victims. Um, do you think that narrative that was created during the PRK years is still relevant for our perception of the DK period today? Uh, not if we're trying hard to understand what happened. It isn't much help in trying to understand what happened. I get the feeling. Uh, uh, the, have admirable feeling that this is one of the missions of the court, both prosecution and defense and witnesses, whatever, to try and come to grips with what went on. And I think you can say without uh, hesitation that what went on was not the behavior of two genocidal people totally in charge of the country at all times. That's, so this kind of history, is, I don't think it's relevant at all to what we're doing. I think it's out there, uh, and that's, uh, I think, perhaps maybe uh, contrary to the good work of the court. And if we go back to your uh, early research of the uh, DK era documents, 
Are you confident that the PRK or Vietnamese officials did not destroy or tamper with these documents in their possession in such a way to emphasize the criminality of this handful of absent demonic perpetrators? Well, my only answer there is if they did, they didn't do a very good job because the documents of all been, thousands and thousands of pages have come into evidence at the, at the trial at this uh, tribunal. Then I apologize, I may not have formulated my question clearly enough, but um, what I'm trying to um, ask you is whether you think that the Vietnamese have manipulated the evidence in such a way by taking away um, documents and um, DK era documents that might reflects a less important role for the leaders at top. We've no evidence that that's what they did. But I mean, we've heard evidence earlier in the last, last week that these standing committee meetings took minimally uh, on the basis of once a week and often more frequently, we have 15 of them, or we have about nine, I think, of them, the 15 documents. So that mass of documents, it either was destroyed or it went somewhere, and we don't know which. I don't think there's evidence that it survived en masse. And uh, I think uh, people will recall uh, the statement that Dirk made, if not in his trial, at least in his interviews, that uh, Mr. Nguyen Chia in the 80s came across Dirk, who wasn't an acquaintance, but just Distant. And he said, why didn't you burn your documents? We burned our documents. So that's part of the answer that some of them were you know, destroyed. I've got no evidence, however, that the PRK or the Vietnamese did anything to documentary form to enhance this. Because as I said, once you go through the documents, this myth doesn't stand up. So it didn't work. If they, if they tried it, it didn't work. I know evidence that they did. Thank you. And in connection with this, we have spoken about the uh, 1979 trial of uh, Yingsari and Pol Pots. Based on your research, what do you know about the selection of evidence for that particular trial? <laughs> Well, that's an excellent question. Uh, the, some of the uh, witness statements at that trial are extremely valuable today because they were, I, I know, for instance, the witness statement of the woman whose name is Denise Afonso. I interviewed her uh, twice in uh, Paris. Uh, her memories coincide exactly with what she said at that court. And there were a harsh indictment of the kind of uh, experiences she had. Uh, the evidence was uh, channeled so that it would uh, produce uh, a picture of some of the horrors of the DK period. Many of the witnesses were very well chosen to uh, speak of these horrors and spoke of them um, accurately. Uh, there was no why the, the trial has not attracted uh, any respect or much respect overseas over the years is because it was certainly a uh, kangaroo court, uh, and this will make uh, uh, make a good job, maybe more difficult. The, d the defense uh, lawyer assigned to uh, Pol Pot Nguyen Sri jumped up and said, these people are insane monsters and should be destroyed. <laughs> this is a defense lawyer. So this is, this is not, I mean, all those aspects of the trial were absurd. But at the same time, they wanted to, ha to show the world, or they hoped to show the world what a terrible thing had happened and a terrible thing had happened. And these were authentic witnesses who came forward. I think a lot of them have come forward again in this tribunal. Uh, 
to suggest, or several of them, suggest what had happened to them. The value is, this is 1979, a year away from the collapse of the regime. These, re these memories had not had the time to be tampered with or altered or blurred. So there's many valuable things in the, in the, in the trial, and I've drawn from them sometimes, but the format of the trial was, was very strange. Okay, um, thank you for um, that answer. <coughs> and I would like to uh, speak with you about um, moving away from your sources of knowledge for now. But I would like to speak to you about the American bombardments of Cambodia in, well, I'll not give too much information, but um, let me first ask you an open question. Could you give us a brief introduction of maybe two minutes about the American bombardments of Cambodia as they occurred in the 1970s and perhaps in the 1960s. Okay, I'll start with a question. I'd be happy to do so with the court's permission because this is, seems to be the 60s, 70s, sometimes in, sometimes not in our purview. If this question is allowed, I'd be happy to answer it, but I don't want to get led back into questions about the 60s and 70s without knowing that this is an area that we can talk about freely and at length. I'm not trying to avoid the question. It's a good question. I want to answer it, but only if I'm allowed to do so. Well, the question is meant to understand the context in which the DK regime Thank you, Mr. President. I'm happy to, uh, to answer that question. As an uh, American citizen uh, at the time, I now have dual citizenship, and as a uh, scholar of Cambodia in the 1970s, I was appalled by the American bombardment, where a massive uh, number of bombs were dropped on a country with which America was not at war. And I had written that this was one of the, to my mind, one of the darker moments in American uh, behavior overseas. And I should mention, in the context that I am a loyal American citizen, I am not going to throw away my passport. I was ashamed of that conduct. Uh, other things just as bad or worse have happened since, but this is writing in the context of 73. Now, 
the effects of the bombing on the on the Khmer Rouge movement. This has been widely debated. Uh, the sources are quite contradictory. Whether the bombing encouraged people to join the Khmer Rouge or encouraged people to flee uh, to Phnom Penh, I think it did both to some extent. I think in one of his interviews in the 80s, uh, I can't, I, this is not verifiable. I mean, I don't have the document in front of me. But Q. Sampan said it didn't make any difference. We moved away. We were always, our troops were in good shape. We didn't get damaged. The troops didn't get damaged by this bombardment. He was saying this is the Khmer uh, forces were skillful enough to not to be uh, decimated by the bombing. We don't know the amount of casualties the bombing inflicted on the Khmer uh, military. We do know that their capacity to take Phnom Penh was postponed by two years. And this uh, taking a very cold, uh, immoral uh, foreign policy view was the objective of the bombardment, was to keep a communist regime from coming to power to the west of Vietnam, which is still west of South Vietnam, which was still uh, a non-communist state allied to the United States. So there are tactical explanations for it that don't wash with me. I don't. I uh, have no, uh, well, I said, uh, my preceding comments, this is a, uh, I think it's a shameful moment in, in American history, I think very well described in many public sources. Well, I'm sorry, <laughs> not just American history, but a, a shameful event for Cambodians also, by all means. Americans didn't suffer at all. Thank you. That, that's a very clear answer. And you mentioned, mentioned the year 1973, and that's also the year I've seen in your writings. I don't want to um, steer you in any way, but uh, was 1973 the only year of the American bombardments, or the only year that the American bombardments took place? Oh, not at all. I, I, I didn't mean to suggest that. 73 was, however, the year of the most intense bombardments on areas that did not have, uh, apparently, clear military significance. It was also the year in which these bombings were stopped as immoral uh, by the U.S. Congress. Bombing the uh, border areas with Vietnam began in 1960, officially began in 1968-69. There have been stray plates crossing across the border a little bit before that, but as a serious campaign of bombing began in particularly in 73, when the ceasefire had been signed by the Vietnamese and the, uh, the, and the Americans, and the Khmer Rouge had refused to sign. Cambodia was, as one uh, cynical general said, the only war in town. Uh, this was a place that the Americans felt those ceasefire didn't apply, so therefore they could unleash uh, resources onto the country that they could no longer unleash on Vietnam. Uh, so, yeah, it was a long history of American bombardment, but I think 73 is the year when most of the bombs were dropped, uh, when uh, there was the least, uh, when it had the, the, the least connection with the Vietnam War, and the most connection was simply a war undeclared and, and I think uh, unjustified between the United States and Cambodia. And you have stated, Professor Chandler, that you have, if I may paraphrase, um, stopped writing books about this era in 1998. Since 1998, have you uh, studied or encountered new material relating to the, these bombings that informed you in any way? Yeah, there's a, a yes, indeed, thank you. Uh, there's some material published. At <laughs> It's quite a strange publication in a Canadian uh, journal called The Walrus by my former student Ben Kiernan and his, one of his students at Yale. And when that material came out, it was quite shocking. Uh, it amplified the number of bombs that had been dropped, the amount of destruction that took place. But when I read it, I wondered why this article had not been sent to a refereed academic journal where someone could have been verified. It was, it was printed in, as journalism. And, 
it could well be that those figures and the conclusions are completely valid. I'm not saying they're not. I was, I was quite, as a scholar, I said this is not the way these figures should reach the public through an unverified uh, journal of, well, it turns out the journal has a kind of anti-America and slant. That's okay. But I mean, it should come through a referee uh, journal. For some reason, I don't know, I'm not in touch with other those people, they chose not to do it this way. And that's why I don't ever cite that document when I when it talk about the bombardment. If all its charges are true, and it's possible they are, uh, many, many more thousands of tons of bombs were dropped in 73 than we realized, than, than previously announced. អរគុណលោកមេធាវីអរគុណអ្នកជំនាញឥឡូវនេះដល់ពីសំរាប់មុខភ័យនាទីចាប់ពីពីរនេះទៅទៅរហូតអំងដល់មួយខ្វះដល